guys, Steeler Dude 11 here, back with another video. Um, this video is basically just me talking about how football went for me, like for my teams in 2020. This isn't just the Steelers. I'm also going to be talking about my favorite college football team, Michigan, as well. So, let's get right into it. So, the title, this is going to be the title of the video, 2020 has got to be the most disappointing year of football for me so far in my life and I, it is pretty fitting for how 2020 went um before I get too far I just want to say um if you guys haven't noticed I did private take down the um original video of me talking about my thoughts of the 2020 Steelers because that was before the playoff game happened and I feel like it would be more fitting if I talked about my thoughts uh, 2020 Steelers and 2020 Michigan now so so I privated that video and this is going to be the new one coming up anyway let's start with um let's start with the Steelers so this was a very very disappointing season considering that considering on how well uh they started and then how poorly they finished um like as you all know the Steelers started the season 11 and 0 and then would go 1-5 after that. Their only win being uh, against the Colts in Week 16. After their 19-14 um, win against the Ravens, they lost to the, they lost to the WFT 23-17 um, at home. Then they went to Buffalo and lost 26-15. Then they um came then they traveled to Cincinnati and played against the Bengals who only had two wins at the time. Even though it was week fifteen the, even though it was only it was week fifteen, the Bengals only had two wins and the Steelers lost twenty four to seventeen. Then week sixteen they came back home and beat the Colts twenty eight to twenty four despite being down twenty four to seven late in the third. And then they travel to Cleveland and lose twenty four to twenty two, um, with the backups. And then, just my thoughts of like this of like the playoff game was very. My prediction was very wrong. If you saw, I made a video, and uploaded it to my channel about ten minutes before the Steelers Browns game. And made my prediction and said I thought the Steelers were going to win. For two reasons. One, I said because the Steelers literally just played them. And had Mason Rudolph as their quarterback. And then had other great players out. And then the Browns started their full squad that they had available. Of course, Odell doesn't count because he suffered a season-ending injury. And then they only lost by two. They almost beat them. So that gave me confidence that considering that, oh, uh, we're playing them at home. Um, we literally just played them and only lost by two with half our team. And the other reason is that Kevin Stefan is that they had COVID issues, including head coach Kevin Stefanski, who literally had to watch slash coach the game from his basement. And then. He just he couldn't really do anything. He just had to see what unfolded. And the Browns went a full week without even practicing. They went from and it wasn't a full week. It was after the Steelers game until that Friday. They had no practice. They didn't start practice until 2 days before the game. And then also, yeah. So the Steelers had multiple advantages. So on paper, it looked like it was going to be a blowout for the Steelers. But, oh boy, was it the complete opposite. I mean, it it, it, did, it ended up not being a blowout, but by the way it looked initially, it looked like it was going to be. The Browns had a 28, had a 28 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter, and then had a 35 to 10 lead at halftime. 
The Steelers did. The Steelers did turn on their gas or did step on the gas in the second half, though, and did come back. The defense didn't allow them to score a single time in the third quarter, but then they allowed two touchdowns in the fourth. And the Steelers, despite scoring um, twenty-seven second-half points, could not complete the comeback, um, and then ended up losing forty-eight to thirty-seven. So. Steelers, for the second time in a row, are one and done. The last time they were in the playoffs was a 2017 season, and they were actually a, division, a divisional bye team that year. Back then, the one and two seed would get the divisional bye, and then it's just that the two seed wouldn't play at home if they had to play the one seed in the AFC Championship. Um, so the Steelers had a, a divisional bye, but then lost instantly to the Jaguars. Of course, the Jaguars have been nothing since then, especially this season. They only won one game, and that was back in... They won their first game in Week 1, and then went on a 15-game losing streak. Um, just very disappointing season. Just considering on how well it started, you know? Like, the Steelers won 11 of their first 11 games. That's the, that You can't do any better than that. Undefeated, 11-0. and After Seattle lost that game against Arizona, and then for like six weeks after that, the Steelers were the only undefeated team in the NFL. The only one until their loss to um, the football team. And then they would only win one more game the rest of the season after that 19-14 win against Baltimore. Ever since that, ever since um, the Steelers were supposed to play the Ravens on Thanksgiving and then the game got moved six days later, the Steelers' offense has not been right. Before that game, like from week one until the Jacksonville game in week, uh, what was it, was it 11? I think it was week 11. From week one to week 11, the offense looked amazing. From week 12 to week, was it? No, maybe... No, from week it was week one to week twelve, the offense was good. Week thirteen to weeks to the wild card round, the offense has been nothing. Was it week thirteen? Let me see. Baltimore was thirteen. Then we buff or uh, uh, Washington fourteen. Buffalo, no, it was week twelve because Cincinnati was week fifteen. Yeah, so week one to week eleven was amazing offense. Week twelve to the wild card round was horrible offense. I feel like the only amazing quarter the Steelers have had was the fourth quarter of the Colts game and the third quarter of the of the wild card game against the Browns. They scored two touchdowns and did not allow them to score a single time. I just, it's just it's just very disappointing, especially as a Steelers fan, um to see your team start out 11 and 0 just to be a one and done in the playoffs. I mean, 11 and 0, we were looking Oh man, we got this division in the bag. We we're hoping we could get the one seed to then a few weeks later we're fighting to even win the dang division because they kept losing. And then now it's like and then they went from 11 and 0 uh number 1 seed and pro like more than likely a Super Bowl contender to Three seed, barely won their division, looking like they're going to be a one and done in the playoffs within a span of like just like a few weeks. People, uh, people on the offense need to be fired, especially offensive coordinator Randy Fickner. Now, I know I don't want people like people tell me in the comments about it's not all Randy, I know it's not him. Big Ben does control a lot of the offense. A lot of the play calls, he, a lot of the plays they do is run by Ben. It's also run by Randy as well. And ever since he came in in 2018, our offense has not been right. Our offense was really right with Todd Haley either, but I feel like Randy Fickner has been a worse OC than Todd Haley. Defensive coordinator Keith Butler is amazing. He he should stay for a while ever since. Our defense has been very good. 
the past few years. The Steelers have finished with one of the best defenses the past four years. The Steelers have finished first place in the league in sacks for the past four years. So everything's going right on defense. It's just the offense that needs to be fixed. Defense could, defense could be better at some things. Of course, losing linebacker Devin Bush and Bud Dupree was a really big shot in the heart. Like those two, those two losses were really bad for us. Joe Hayden didn't play in the wild card round either. Mike Hilton got hurt in the game too. Um, the offense, Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, great comeback season. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you go. F I don't Never mind. I was going to say maybe potential comeback player of the year candidate, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Alex Smith. Um, running back, running backs are horrible. Steelers finished the season dead last in rushing offense. The rush, the running attack did start pretty well, but then ever, ever after week six, it's just been nothing. Like I explained in the last video, it just every single time we run the ball, it's like a two-yard gain every time or a loss. And then our leading rusher at the end of the game is usually James Conner, and he only has like 20 or 30 rushing yards a game. Receiving has had its ups and downs, um, especially with rookie Chase Claypool. Um, I think he has been a great rookie. He's been. I think he's a really good receiver, and he's going to be a great addition to the Steelers. Um, he does have some struggles, though, but hey, he's a rookie. It makes sense. Rookies aren't perfect when they first come in, but they will learn and get better. Um, other receivers. Eric Ebron has been okay. I mean, he hasn't been horrible, but he wasn't as good as I thought he was going to be after seeing how he performed at the Colts in 2019. Um, but he has, has but some butterfingers, but the biggest butterfingers candidate definitely has to go to Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson was probably our worst, worst of the f main three receivers. And he definitely was the worst. I mean, he was really good. He was our leading receiver on the team for a long time, but then... And then he just had that streak at, towards our... When we had to start our losing streak, he just kept dropping everything. And it hasn't really fixed. He's gotten a little better. Hasn't been horrible. And then Juju is something else. He... Juju has... has Juju went from being the most liked receiver in the NFL to the most disliked receiver in the NFL. All because of him being an idiot. He's starting to turn into Antonio Brown. I hope it gets better. I hope he doesn't act like an idiot again. He's he's a free agent now. Um, he says he wants to stay at the Steelers. Their teammates, Ben Roethlisberger, said they want him to stay at the Steelers too. I just hope that Juju learns from his idiotic behavior and gets better and has a better 2021. But he has been on a decline. Juju's best season was his rookie season. Ever since then, he hasn't really been that good. I mean, he's been good, but not as good as his rookie year. With his TikToks that he makes, him talking trash about other teams, him TikTok dancing on the opponent's logo if it's a road game. He did it against Buffalo and pissed them off. He did it against Cincinnati and pissed them off. Before they played Cleveland, he said that they're going to clap them because they're just your typical Browns and the complete opposite happened. And then Chase Claypool comes out and says that the Browns are going to get clapped by the Chiefs and that sounds like sounds like someone's salty that you just lost. You're so salty that you're depending on it that you're saying they're going to get clapped by a team that you guys are acting like, oh, we're going to be so good, we're going to destroy them and then you lose. Because you're so high up in your ass that you're not focused on actually winning. And like I said in the last video, it was obvious why the Steelers lost. They didn't want to win that game as much as the Browns wanted to win. I mean, it makes sense. 
It was the first time the Browns were in the playoffs since 2002. That was the year I was born. And they won, and that game Sunday was their first playoff win since 1994. So that streak ends. The longest playoff win drought in the NFL still continues. It belongs to the Bengals. The Bengals, the last time they were in the playoffs was in 2015. But the last time the Bengals won a playoff game was in 1990. It was a 1990 season, but it was like in January 1991. So it's been 30 years since the Bengals have won a playoff game. And then, I mean, once again, congrats to the congrats to the Browns and congrats to Browns fans. I bet you guys are. I know you guys are really, really happy. It's the first time they won a playoff game in like 26, 27 years. It's the first time they're in the playoffs in 18 years. Now they're in a divisional round. If they beat, I'm actually going to be rooting for them against Kansas City because Kansas City is starting to turn into a Patriots for me. Like they're now they're starting to win everything. And also the Chiefs are very overrated. Uh, their record is they are not like I said in our in my predictions video. We did one on on my friend Ethan's channel at Player One. Um, I we said that the Chiefs are not as good as the record implies. They're fourteen and two, which is really good. But they could have lost a lot more games than they actually did. But don't get me wrong. Patrick Mahomes is a really good quarterback. Andy Reid's a really good coach. I don't have anything against them. I They're cool guys. It's just, for me, when I see a team win everything all the time, it starts getting annoying. And, unless if it's my team, of course. <laughs> so, basically to wrap up the Steelers section of this video, very disappointed on how the season ended. And once again, 2020 Steelers, probably the most disappointing season I've ever seen from them. I know you guys would be saying, well, really, it's more disappointing than the years you guys didn't make the playoffs. Like, in, like, 2014 or, like, the past couple years, you guys didn't even make the playoffs. Well, the reason why this season, and Steelers fans will agree, this season is more disappointing than the past two seasons because of how the way we started and then how the way we ended. I don't think... I've seen a team go start 11 and 0, finish the season 12 and 4, and then lose instantly in the wild card round. And it was been pretty bad too. So, most disappointing season. I just just by the way the season started it looked like it was going to be a lot. It was going to be a very amazing season like potential Super Bowl contender. Yeah, we went from potential Super Bowl contender to one and done in the playoffs. So, that's the Steelers section of this video. Once again, very disappointing season. Hopeful, let's hope for a better 2021. Anyway, let's get into Mich the Michigan portion. Michigan 2020, again, just like the Steelers, very disappointing. Um, Michigan did only play six games, though. They were supposed to play nine. Their last three games of the year got canceled because of Michigan's COVID issues. Michigan, and by the way the season was, basically the NCAA was, with all the cancels, if you, you, no matter how bad you are, you could play in a bowl game if you want to. That's why you saw teams with losing records playing in bowl games. And Michigan decided not to be in one probably for the best. They would have been embarrassed by whoever they would have played against. So, going into the games. First game against Minnesota, Michigan looked amazing. They destroyed them 49 to 24. But it was like destroyed a very good Minnesota team from last season, but then Minnesota ended up being a lot worse than what we thought. And of course, Michigan also ended up being a lot worse than we thought. The game looked very very bad at first. Considering that at least the first play of the game wasn't a fumble like 2019 was. Um, and then we had they had amazing drive and then they had a punt. 
and Minnesota blocked the punt and then scored a touchdown a couple plays later. The Michigan immediately answers with a 70-yard touchdown run by Zach Charbonnet. That was Zach. That was Charbonnet's only good moment, only good play of the season. That's the only time Charbonnet has been noticed ever since. Ever since that play, he's just been nothing. So destroy Minnesota, looking really good. And then they're playing. Then next week they play against a Michigan State team that lost to Rutgers by like what was it, ten points at home. And Michigan State lost their first home opener in like twenty some in twenty one years. And the Rutgers won their first game against a Big Ten team in twenty one Big Ten games. So it looked like Michigan State was gonna be really bad this year, and they were really bad this year. Their only wins were Michigan, and somehow they beat Northwestern as well. Um. And then Michigan, it's at home. Michigan opened up that game as 24.5-point favorites and ended up losing by three. That's when I knew that Michigan was not good. Despite having an amazing start of the season being very good, they just get embarrassed by home against Michigan State. Joe Milton, I mean... I did not listen to hype this year, unlike 2019. In 2019, I was very disappointed by the season, only because I listened to hype and truly believed that Michigan was going to go undefeated. Um, 2020, I was like, I'm not going to listen to any hype because I don't want to be disappointed again. And I saw videos saying Joe Milton is going to be the next Cam Newton, which, ironically, yes, because they were both pretty bad in 2020. Um... But yeah, Joe Milton, he looked amazing in the in the um Minnesota game, then ever since he's been horrible throwing horrible passes, like interceptions that go straight to defenders. And then the next week they played um Indiana and lost that. Indiana beat Michigan for the first time since the eighties. And um Joe Milton looked horrible. The defense looked horrible, especially especially the defense. Biggest weakness of the defense that game was that they jumped off sides like seven or eight times in the first half. It was very bad. And, like, it just kept going and going. Like, they wouldn't stop jumping off sides. And all the, all the Michael Penix, the Indian quarterback, this is all he was doing. He was just doing this. That's it. And then there we go. Every time. That just shows you how inexperienced the uh, defense is. The defense, Michigan defense, which if only a couple years ago used to be very, very, very dominant, and now they're very weak. I mean, it is young. I mean, we don't have a lot of, ex they don't have a lot of experienced players in the defense. Um, then the next week, they're back at home against the Badgers, and they just got absolutely crushed. They lost 49 to 11. I think it was like uh, 20, 35 to nothing at one point, wasn't it? Um, they even benched Joe Milton for Cade McNamara. He came in and looked really good. The next week, they played Rutgers at Rutgers. And for some reason, they decided to start Milton. And unsurprisingly, he was very bad. And then Rutgers got up to a 17 nothing lead. So then they put in Cade McNamara, who played very, very well. And and then then and then they ended up um, winning forty eight to forty two in triple overtime. So then after that, then they put went back home and played the o and five Penn State. Now I couldn't watch this game because I this was during the time when I had a job, so I couldn't watch it. And then I I thought this Michigan was going to win. Just seeing how they played last week when Cade McNamara came in, and then Cade McNamara was going to start, and then Penn State had not even won a dang game yet, and then lose by 10 points. And then that was the last game Michigan played in 2020 because their game against Maryland, their game against Ohio State, and then their game against Iowa all got canceled because Michigan had COVID issues. So, I don't have much to say about Michigan as I do the Steelers because, I mean, Michigan didn't really play a lot of games. They only played six games, and they only won two of those six. 
And then, of course, Michigan fans were saying they want Harbaugh fired. How does Michigan respond? By giving Harbaugh a contract extension through 2025. So he will be the head coach for the next four years. Is it a bad thing? Yes and no. No, because Harbaugh knows he can win games. Like the past like the past few years when they actually had a real football season, like they played twelve regular season games and then a bowl game, or unless they played a conference championship before COVID got into the mix, Harbaugh could win games. They did not have a single losing season under Harbaugh until this year. Of course, Harbaugh did have struggles against the really good teams like Ohio State. Ever since Harbaugh got fired or hired in 2015, it is 2021, and Michigan still has not beaten Ohio State under Harbaugh. The last win against Ohio State was 2011. It is 2021, so this November will be the t will be 10 years since Michigan last defeated. Ohio State. And speaking of Ohio State, they got destroyed in the national championship last night against Alabama, which is a pretty happy sight to see for a Michigan fan. Ohio State and Alabama are the teams I root against the most, but when they play against each other, I always pick Alabama because Ohio State is my most hated team. And seeing them get crushed the way they did puts a big smile on my face. Um, anyway, back to Michigan. He knows how to win games. He rare they rarely during the times where they had all those winning seasons, they rarely lost they rarely lost to unranked opponents. They usually could beat their unranked opponents. They could usually beat the bad Big Ten teams. The good Big Ten teams they struggled against. Um Harbaugh has never taken Michigan Harbaugh has not taken Michigan to a Big Ten championship. Um, Michigan has only won one bowl game under Harbaugh since his entry, and that was his first season when they oh, in a forty-one to seven win against Florida. Twenty-six, and that was a Citrus Bowl. Twenty-sixteen was a thirty-three to thirty-two loss against Florida State in the Orange Bowl. Twenty-seventeen was a twenty-six to nineteen loss to South Carolina in the Outback Bowl. Twenty-eighteen was a forty-one to fifteen loss to Florida in the. Was it Citrus? No, it wasn't Citrus. It was the Peach Bowl. 2019 was a 35-16 loss to Alabama in the Citrus Bowl. At least we didn't lose to Alabama as bad as Notre Dame did in the bowl game. <laughs> um, so, and then Harbaugh is 2-12 and 12 against top 10 teams. His only two wins against the top 10 team was against number 8 Wisconsin in 2016 and against number 8 Notre Dame in 2019. Every time they played a top 10 team besides those two games were losses. So, very disappointed by both my teams this season. Hopefully 2021 will be a better season, will be a better football season. Um NFL will definitely play its games. Uh, college football, I don't know if they're going to go back to um, having... I don't know if the, it'll be back to normal with the Big Ten having a nine-game schedule, like have, have nine games against the Big Ten against, and three games against non-conference opponents. Michigan's 2021 non-conference opponents is Western Michigan, Washington, and Ball State, and all of those are at home. In 2020, Michigan was supposed to be at Washington the first game, but of course, uh, that didn't happen. So, the Michigan was supposed to also play, um, maybe Ball State? No, Ball State was supposed to be 2020. 2021 is Northern Illinois. They were supposed to play Ball State and Arkansas State, but Michigan rescheduled the Arkansas State game like 2024 or 2025. Um, so, anyway, hopefully 2021 will be better for Michigan and the Steelers. For Michigan, 
It's just having recruiting better players. 2021, a five-star quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, will be coming in. Um, like, he graduates from high school this year. So, hopefully, he's, hopefully it's better. But we won't know until September. And for the Steelers, I hope they just learn their mistakes and do what they did in 2020, but then not choke at the end of the year. Just do how good they did at the beginning of this 2020 season and do that the entirety of 2021. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. And um, I will see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be. Goodbye.